Hi guys and welcome back to the Mighty Blues. My name is of course Cameron. There you go, it is confirmed Frank Lampard is the new Everton manager. After days of it being reported, after days of it being confirmed by other media sources really, just the official Everton accounts, Twitter accounts, websites, all of that, we were waiting for official confirmation. I think Sky Sports and Talk Sports said yesterday that it was officially confirmed. The various other journalists across the last 24, 48 hours or so have stated that this is a done deal and we've been waiting eagerly waiting there's been a lot of suspense a lot of I would say patience on Twitter but also a little bit of impatience as well but we finally have the announcement Frank Lampard is the new Everton manager It's believed to be a two and a half year deal of course you know that is um, pretty obvious with it being in January it was never going to be a straight two or, or, or three year deal it was always going to be you know either a year and a half or a two year and a half it is two and a half year deal the ex-Chelsea and Derby manager and of course ex-Chelsea West Ham Manchester City player comes in to take over from from Rafael Benitez. Interesting stats. Actually, Frank Lampard is the first Everton manager to have played under the previous two Everton managers as a player for a long, long time. I think Billy uh, Bingham might be the, the last to do that. Correct me if I'm wrong on that one. But finally, Everton have our man. And I know that a lot of Blues are certainly relieved this morning that this has been announced, even though it was never really under you know, a, a, any real sort of problem, of course, as soon as the decision was made by the Everton board on Friday, a lot of, you know, reliable journalists across the country had reported that this is pretty much a done deal. There was a lot of journalists such as Alan Myers, etc., on Twitter today saying, you know, just be patient. It's nothing to do with there being a problem. It's just that there's a lot of paperwork to be signed. There's a lot of things to be signed off before an official announcement could be made. Obviously, <clears throat> Sky Sports announced it yesterday, which was a little bit of a you know, uh, disappointing for me because, uh, again, you know, Sky Sports and, and media sources like this are announcing news before the actual club are announcing it. But maybe Sky jumped the gun a little bit and maybe Everton weren't ready uh, to announce it, um, you know, before, before Sky did ultimately. But none of that matters. It has been announced. Frank Lampard is the new Everton manager. And finally, we can look forward. Finally, we can start to, you know, get a little bit of optimism, get a little bit of positivity going for the upcoming games. We definitely, definitely need it. Let's be honest, Frank has got an absolutely monumental job on his hands, a job and a task that he's never been faced with during his managerial or playing career, really, maybe, you know, a little bit when he was at West Ham in his earlier days, but certainly not um, <clears throat> throughout the majority of his playing career or you know, either one of his two managerial jobs so far. He's never been put in a, in a situation where he's in a relegation battle. He's joined a club that has got a lot of adversity around it at the moment, a lot of toxicity, a lot of pressure, a lot of, you know, discontent with the board and the players. And, and Frank has got to ultimately come in and, and, and try and glue that all together and fix that, at least in the short term, to guarantee your survival in the Premier League. And then obviously, <clears throat> you know, we can, uh, we can address the situation in the summer. But... I'm confident with Frank Lampard. I am. I said a couple of weeks ago that Frank Lampard wouldn't be my number one choice. And my number one choice was actually Duncan Ferguson. And it's interesting, the Duncan Ferguson situation, because we did have reports last night that Duncan Ferguson was likely to leave Everton Football Club um, <clears throat> and maybe go and you know, try and find some, some alternate employment and, and, and maybe, you know, try and become a first team manager somewhere and, and get some experience. And I think that would be good for Dunk. You know, as sad and as heartbreaking as it would be seeing Duncan Ferguson leave Everton, I actually think that would be, you know, a, a, a good decision for him. But then, you know, even earlier this morning, we had uh, Alan Myers, who of course works for, for Sky now, close to Everton Football Club, saying that Duncan Ferguson was asked to be part of, Ever of Frank Lampard's backroom staff, um, you know, yesterday. And, and, and Alan Myers doesn't believe that, that Duncan Ferguson will leave the club. He believes that he will stay on as part of Frank Lampard's backroom staff. So at this current moment, we don't really know what's going on with that. I'm sure that will be confirmed in due course. But all we do know is that Frank Lampard is the new Everton manager. And as I said, I have got a lot of optimism. I am quite confident, you know, with, with, with this appointment. Um, <clears throat> you know, given the the names that were available on the shortlist, uh, you know, with the exception of Duncan Ferguson, because it didn't really seem like Dunk was ever under consideration by the club, which is strange. But if you if you if you take Duncan Ferguson out of the conversation and you look at some of the other names that we've been linked with over the last couple of weeks or so, Vitor Pereira was obviously a strong, strong candidate. Roberto Martinez was was, you know, again, I firmly believe a strong candidate. If it wasn't for the Belgium FA, I actually think Roberto Martinez would probably be the Everton manager. Um 
you know, Jose Mourinho who come under consideration. And I know there was a couple of other names, Nico Kovac and Rudy Garcia, who, who people would have been happy with. But I actually don't think they were any more than just a name thrown in the hat by their agent to try and sort of spice the, the situation up a little bit. So when you look at the names we were actually linked with and the managers that were actually considered by the Everton board or, or considering themselves to, to want the Everton job, I think Frank Lampard is probably the best of that bunch and I know some people mightn't be particularly pleased with Frank Lampard because of his lack of experience in in this type of scenario in this type of situation before but for me we've got to get behind Lampard now we've got to get behind the manager we've got to get behind the players and we've got to show Frank Lampard why we are the greatest football club in 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 the world and why we are the greatest fans in the world and ultimately you know His first game will be against Brentford on Saturday in the FA Cup, and that's a fantastic opportunity for him to get a good start, a fantastic opportunity for him to get a positive start, and and, and obviously you know pick up a, a really really important win to take us into the next round of the of the FA Cup, and then you've got a, an absolute. I've said before, some people say a six-pointer. For me, it's about a 40-pointer against Newcastle a week after. They're making some really shrewd signings today. On deadline day, they've got a couple of really good players in so far, certainly players that improve their squad and, and help their you know, battle for survival. And that game is, is, is absolutely monumental. If Everton lose that game, then... There's absolutely no doubt that we are in a relegation battle. I think we're in a relegation battle now anyway, but if we lose that game, then we're certainly in um, <clears throat> in a situation that we don't want to be in. Newcastle will be thinking the same. They'll be looking at it thinking we need to win this game because if we can win it, then we're, you know, we're one step closer to being out of that relegation zone. Um, <clears throat> and not only that, but they will also drag a side who, who are near enough you know, in and around them in the Premier League into that as well. So it's a massive, massive game. Frank Lampard's first Premier League game in charge of Everton is, is arguably our most important game of the season and, and he's got a massive task on his hands to go away to Newcastle and pick up three points. You've then got Leeds the week after, which again is another absolutely massive monumental game. Leeds are in and around the same area as well. So, you know, Frank hasn't got the easiest starts, you know, that that's for sure. He's got a couple of Premier League games upcoming that are absolute must-wins and, you know, I think <clears throat> it's down to us as fans now to, to get behind the manager and to and to really sort of make Goodison Park and, 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 and make, you know, obviously St James's Park when we go there next week and an absolute bear pit for, for, for opposition teams and for opposition players and, and get behind the manager. You know, Frank Lampard has been known to, to like to use the, the four three three in the uh, in the past when he's been at Chelsea and when he's been at Derby, which is obviously massively positive for, for Evertonians. We've been crying out for three in the midfield for a long, long time now. So to employ a manager that prefers to play that formation is um is certainly a benefit. We know obviously Frank is looking to make his first signing, which is Donny van der Beek on loan, according to Fabrizio Romano and other sources. That one is done and Van der Beek has been in Liverpool today having his medical. So I'm sure we'll hear over the next few hours or so you know confirmation about that deal being done whether we'll do any more business today is 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 up in the air and we don't know that so far but Frank Lampard is certainly making an impression quickly and, and he's doing <clears throat> ultimately what he was going to have to do and that was come in and get to work straight away no time to settle in no time to rest no time to you know feel his, his boundaries or see what he's got to work with it's it's simple he's got to come in and he's got to get to work straight away and and as I said before Frank Lampard was even officially announced yesterday the Donny van der Beek deal was seemingly completed so it, it's clear that the manager is wanting to come in and wanting to have an instant impact it's clear that he already knows what Everton need which is key it's not one of these situations where he's coming in thinking well I want to have a look at the squad I want to have a look at the squad for a week or two and see what I can work with because he, he didn't have that luxury the transfer window was always going to close today and you know on Friday a decision hadn't been made so Frank Lampard has gone from not knowing whether he's going to get the Everton job to getting the Everton job and needing to sign you know at least a couple of players and and, and obviously we're, we're only looking to bring one in at the moment but that could change within the space of 48 hours or so so he had to get his head down he had to work hard and he had to work quick um and it seems like he's done that and that's also you know very positive as I said this style of, of football this style of play fast paced you know getting forward attacking football 4-3-3 um you know <clears throat> again as i said that chelsea worked with I don't want to say limited resources because Chelsea's squad is an embarrassment of riches and their young players are absolutely world-class. They're better than anybody's in the world, arguably. So even in that season where he didn't have no money to spend, even in that season where he had the transfer cap, he was still, you know, he still had a, a vast, wide majority, uh, you know, uh, amount of quality to, to work with, um, <clears throat> you know, without having to make any, any transfer whatsoever. <coughs> Pardon me. 
Um, so you know, uh, again, I don't really want to say, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, a, a, a handy, you know, a, 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 a transfer problem because he still had a lot of ridiculously good players there. Um, but the, you know, at the end of the day, he wasn't able to spend. He wasn't able to to, to spend the money that he, he typically would. That he certainly did the season after, and, and ultimately bringing in players that that didn't quite work, and, and ended up in in him losing his job at the end. But that season where he couldn't spend money, done really really well. He integrated the youth, which I think is a massive massive positive to look at from an Everton standpoint. Is you know Frank Lampard's. Um, you know, want to bring in young players and give young players an opportunity. It, it breeds really well for the likes of Anthony Gordon, Lewis Dobbin, who'll be looking at this appointment thinking, right, I'm, I'm more likely to get a chance under this manager than I have under any of the previous two managers, really, because the previous two managers hadn't had a, you know, particularly good record at integrating young players into the side, whereas Frank Lampard certainly has. And I know we could sit here and say, you know, Chelsea have got an unbelievable academy and the players in, in Chelsea's academy are absolutely fantastic. However, um, you know, the reality of the situation is, is um is, is that the likes of Reese James, Mason Mount, um you know Fakayo Tomori, Tammy Abraham probably wouldn't have been given that opportunity if it wasn't for Frank Lampard to prove their quality and you know the, uh, every one of those players I've just mentioned then are top top quality players and are either shining at Chelsea or or shining elsewhere. He likes to play with with positive you know attacking fullbacks which will be really really beneficial for Nathan Patterson and Vitaly Mikolenko obviously um. And he's, as I said, he's a fast forward thinking attacking manager who wants to play good football and wants to get, you know, sides up the pitch, scoring goals, creating chances. And, and he's a young manager as well who will come with fresh ideas and, and, and a point to prove ultimately, you know, <clears throat> it's, it's all here all we like and talk about Frank Lampard's time at Chelsea and Frank Lampard's time at Derby. But Frank will be coming in with a, with a massive point to prove. He'll want to prove to everybody around the Premier League that when he was sacked by Chelsea it was it was unfair and you know he, he has got what it takes to turn aside from being in a, in a sort of dangerous situation into you know at least the comfortable situation for this point and then obviously build on that in the um in the summer and and as I said I don't know whether it's because it's you know, it's not Vitor Pereira and I'm a little bit more positive about the Frank Lampard signing and, and appointment but I have got I, I have got a lot of confidence in this. I have, and I've got, you know, I've, I, I'm, I'm really, really looking forward to seeing how Frank Lampard ultimately does at, uh, at Everton. And, and I know some people are a little bit worried, and I know some people are sort of, you know, a, a little bit <clears throat> concerned about the lack of experience Frank Lampard has got in this current situation, i.e. in a relegation battle in the Premier League. But I think <clears throat> a lot of his attributes as a manager could suit Everton down to a T is as I said is 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 want to bring through the young players and give young players a chance. I think he shows a lot of passion on the sideline as well, which will go a long way for Evertonians as well as his attacking style, his attacking football, you know, four three three, wanting to get forward, but also, you know, Frank has got a massive job on his hand at, at you know, sorting out this defence and ultimately you know, stopping Everton from conceding goals because that is our biggest problem at the moment. Our biggest problem isn't scoring. Our biggest problem isn't necessarily creating chances. Our biggest problem is conceding goals. And Frank has got a massive job on his hand at being able to stop Everton from doing that. He's already made one sign, and as it seems, when that is confirmed in, in Donny van der Beek, which I think is actually a you know a really smart sign, and we spoke about that yesterday. Um, <clears throat> but It'll be interesting to see if Frank can get any more business done before the end of the transfer window tonight. And if so, who who those players will be who've been linked with the Disagana Gay, um, who obviously is away with the Af in the African combinations at the moment. He would be an absolutely unbelievable sign. And but how likely that is to happen, you know, I don't know. Obviously, with him being away and with it being deadline day, I think it, it, it's probably very very unlikely. But you know, again. <clears throat> It shows the type of player and the profile of player that Frank Lampard is wanting to bring in at Everton. And I actually think the Adrissa Garnagay profile of player is is that type that we should be looking for. So it'll be really, really interesting to see what happens certainly over the next 24 hours or so. But Frank Lampard is the Everton manager. It has been confirmed. He has signed a two-and-a-half-year deal with the football club. No time to settle in. No time to look around the team and see who's good enough and see who isn't good enough. Got to get to work. Stay away. He's got a massive game coming up on Saturday against Brentford in the FA Cup. And then we've got two season-defining Premier League games after that as well with Newcastle and Leeds coming up. And that really could determine whether or not we stay in the Premier League or whether or not we don't stay in the Premier League. And and as I said, one of the big, big, big positives I'm taking about the Frank Lampard appointment as of this moment is the amount of positivity that is around and it uh, that is surrounding it. Sorry, the amount of positivity from Evertonians. You know, I, I can't even begin to imagine what 
social media would have been like had Vito Pereira have been given the job and that's nothing to do with Vito Pereira personally or against Vito Pereira but the the general consensus around the Evertonians uh, certainly on social media was that they wanted Frank Lampard now whether that's because you know we want Frank Lampard because we believe he's an amazing manager he's going to be a success or whether we want Frank Lampard because he isn't Vito Pereira and he's the best of the options that we had that ultimately is, is irrelevant in the point I'm trying to make and the point I'm trying to make is that you know a lot of Evertonians across social media we're, we're fully in the Frank Lampard camp and that automatically creates more positivity than what it would be if Vitor Pereira comes in i.e. we get to Goodison Park you know on 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 Saturday and if we go 1-0 down I think the crowd will get behind it they'll back it they'll be screaming they'll be shouting the atmosphere will be up whereas if we went 1-0 down under Vitor Pereira I think it, you, you know you'd see the same level of of, of sort of you know, fume and upset is what you would have seen if we'd have gone 1-0 down under Rafael Benitez. So there's definitely more of a positive sort of, um, you know, feeling around the football club at the moment. And there's that optimism that we've brought in a young, hungry, you know, manager that has got ultimately a point to prove and, and plays good football, plays nice football, did the derby, albeit probably should have been promoted to derby and some would see that as a failure, but still, you know, done done a good job there. And, for me, <clears throat> I think he done a, he, I think he done a good job at Chelsea. I, I do listen. Chelsea are, are known for sacking managers as soon as the you know they lose a a, a game of football, and, and that's the, the Chelsea way, and that's been a very successful method for Chelsea over the years. But I, I remember there was a time when when Frank Lampard was sacked, where a lot of Chelsea fans actually began to turn on on um you know Roman Abramovich and said that it was unfair. Now, obviously, in hindsight, they went on to bring in you know, uh, Thomas Tuchel, and, and he ended up winning them a Champions League within six months, so I'm sure a lot of Chelsea fans will um, will, will, will will applaud that decision by Roman Abramovich, but the point is is that a lot of Chelsea fans still had the faith and belief that Frank Lampard was the right man to take them forward and was the right man to do that job, so let's hope that he can Im- implement some of, the, um, some of the tactics and some of the styles that he implemented in that first season at Chelsea into Everton, albeit we're in a very, very different situation, so I understand the worry about, you know, we're not a side that are fighting for the top four, we're a side that are fighting to get out of a relegation battle, and, and Frank has, has got a massively difficult job on his hands and a job that he's never faced before, but I am confident that, um, you know, he'll be able to sort this out. And, and as I said a couple of days ago, and I'll say it again, it's down to us as Evertonians now to get behind the manager, get behind the players, turn up a good from half week in, week out, making an absolute bear pit for the opposition. And, you know, I think if we do that, I think Lampard's tactics and, and the ability of this Everton squad will uh, will will pull through. And then obviously in the summer, we can look at bringing in other players or, or looking at what the future of this football club holds. But, we know the future of the management is Frank Lampard here. Signed a two and a half year deal with the football club. Let us know your thoughts in the comments section down below. Do you agree with this appointment? If so, let us know. Are you happy? Are you ecstatic? Are you just sort of okay with it? Are you happy that it's not some of the other candidates that we're being linked with? Or are you not happy at all? Do you think this is a massive risk? And it is a massive risk ultimately. And, um, you know, as I said, every manager that Everton will link with was going to be a massive risk. There wasn't one that you looked at and went, he is, you know, he's not a risk at all. Every one of them was a gigantic risk. It just so happens that Frank Lampard, I think, is less of a risk than a couple of the other managers we've been linked with. So let us know your thoughts. If you have enjoyed this one, please hit that like button. It does only take a second. We will be going live later on in the day to discuss this appointment and all of the other business that we're doing. Donny van der Beek and whoever else is being linked with coming in or does come in. We'll wait and see. Uh, but let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you have enjoyed this one, please do leave a like. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new to the channel as well. Massive, massive thank you all for watching, and we'll see you soon on the Mighty Blues. Yeah.